friends, it's Friday Fun Day with Sarah. That's me. <laughs> well, today we're going to do something simple and silly. And we're going to make some watermelon appliques. And there's several different ways that you can do these. You can make a basic watermelon applique. You can make one with a silly smile. Or you can turn that smile sideways, add a little curl and a clip, and it becomes a keychain or just a bag clip. You'll never lose your luggage if you've got this watermelon clip on your suitcase. And that's what we're going to do today because when I think of July, I think of watermelon because I love me some watermelon. Now you can find this crochet pattern on my blog and it, ha but it will have all the options on there for you. But I'm going to show you how to do this today. So let's find out what we need to make some fun summer watermelons. To make some fun little watermelon appliques or clip, you're going to of course need some yarn. And I just used some Red Heart Super Saver and some other brands that are 100% acrylic yarns from my yarn stash. I used a light pink here and red, depending on what kind of watermelon you want to make. You need a little bit of black just for details. Doesn't take much at all. Just get in your yarn stash and see what you can find. They are all medium weight, number four, acrylic yarns. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need a needle for weaving in ends because we are changing color, so you will have some ends to weave in. And of course, embroidery on the face or the seeds, however way you want to go with that. You'll need your scissors. My needle's magnetized. Let's move that. <laughs> you'll need your scissors. And then if you want to add a clip, you'll need some sort of a clip. Now I purchased these ones. These are plastic. I, pur I purchased these at Walmart. Here's a metal one, which is, this is one of my favorite kind because it's super easy to open. But you can use any kind of a clip that you have on hand or not. You could always just attach this right to your luggage just with some yarn if you want to. I like the idea, idea of a clip because you can move it from bag to bag. All right, so get in your yarn stash, find some fun yarns, and we'll get started. So we're going to begin with the color of the inside of our watermelon, and I'm going to do another pink one. So I'm going to start with my slip knot, chain two, and now we're going to stitch four single crochets in that second chain from the hook. One, two, three, and four. We're going to chain one and turn. And now for row two, we're going to stitch two single crochets in each of those four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and chain one. And you can already see how we're forming the inside of our watermelon. All right. Let's do row three. So our chain one here on any of our rows does not count as a stitch. And we're going to turn our work. We're going to stitch two single crochets in the first stitch. One, two. Then we'll stitch one in the next. Two in the next. One, two. One in the next. Two in the next. One, two, one in the next, two in the next, whoops, one, two, and then one single crochet in that last stitch and chain one. So we started with four, row two had eight, and row three has twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve single crochets. Chain one and turn. All right, so we're going to stitch two single crochets in the first single crochet. 
one, two. Now we're going to stitch one single crochet in the next two. One, two. So we're doing two and two. Two single crochets in the next, one single crochet in the next two. Two single crochets in the next, one single crochet in the next two. Two single crochets in the next, one and two, and then one single crochet in those last two single crochet stitches and chain one. So for row four, we have 16 single crochets. Now for row five, we've chained one, we're going to turn our work and we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of those 16 stitches. So for row five, I stitched one single crochet in each of those 16 stitches. All right, so we'll go ahead and cut our yarn because we're going to change colors. We're done with our main color of our watermelon and now we're gonna bring in this white. And remember to chain one after your color change and turn. And so now for row six, we're going to place two single crochets in the first single crochet. We're going to stitch one single crochet in the next three. One, two, three. Then two single crochets in the next, one and two, and one single crochet in the next three. One, two, and three, three, I mean two, <laughs> two single crochets in the next stitch, one and two, and one single crochet in the next three. <clears throat> so we're doing two and three. All right, so two single crochets in the next and one single crochet in those last three single crochet stitches. All right, and so that is what row six should look like. And you're going to have 20 single crochets. All right, so we're finished with our white. We just did that one row, so we'll go ahead and take that off and bring in our green. And chain one and turn. And what we're going to do is stitch one single crochet in each of those 20 single crochet stitches. One single crochet in each of the single crochets across our row. And again, we'll have 20 single crochet stitches. So we're finished with our green, so we're again going to cut that off, and yes, we're going to have just a few ends to weave in. We're going to bring our pink, or our main color, back in, and we're going to single crochet across the top, just so it gives it a nice finished edge. All right, so we'll go right in that first stitch here, and stitch a single crochet, there we go, and we'll just stitch right across so that we have a nice even edge on the top of our watermelon, or if you're doing the sideways face, on the side. <laughs> there we go, oops, I pulled that out myself. There we go. We're just evenly single crocheting across. And then once we get to this edge, we'll tie off and we'll take a minute or two, maybe even three, <laughs> and weave in all these ends before we add any more of the details. Unfortunately, when you have a pattern that you have a lot of ends, 
you're gonna have a lot of weaving in. <laughs> Alrighty. But if you don't look at those ends, you got a really cute watermelon. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab my needle. I'm gonna turn this over and tidy up the back of my watermelon. And the key to having something look tidy and neat when you're weaving in, when you have several colors, is to make sure you go back and forth in those stitches and between the fibers of the yarn and stay within that color. Because if I decide I want to weave in the green one into the pink or the white, it's going to show through and make it look a little messy. So I want to make sure like this green one, which I made my tail just a little short. There we go. I want to make sure that I weave that in through the fibers and stitches of the green. Okay. We don't want to do that in the white because it just might accidentally show through on the other side. All right. So I'm going to finish tidying up my watermelon and then I'll show you how to do the faces and the seeds as well as that cute little curl. So there are several different options of what you can do for your face or if you don't want to face some seeds on your watermelon or you can just leave it blank. It's still super duper cute. All right. So this is just straight stitches with black yarn. The eyes on both of these are straight stitches. The smile is a straight are straight stitches and the same thing with this half smile. I'm going to make this one look like this one, okay? But I'm also going to explain to you how the eyes are all done the same as the seeds, and then we'll do the mouth. And then I'll add on this cute pink clip and the curl. I threaded on some black yarn onto my needle, but whatever face or style you choose, the straight stitches are done pretty much the same. It's just the placement. All right, and so what I like to do is do the eyes first. And whether you're doing them like this one or even doing the seeds, they're done in a similar fashion. The key to getting them to stay up is not to stitch between and in the holes, but to go in the stitches themselves. Go up through a stitch and go down through a stitch. And we're going to leave some yarn on the back there so we can weave that in when we're done. And I like to go over it twice so we have a nice thick eye. And then I'm going to move down a little bit to the, a little bit lower stitch to make the second eye. And again, I'm going through stitches and fibers and not the holes in between the stitches. And the reason is you'll lose that stitch in those holes if you do it that way. Okay, so I have kind of crooked eyes and I love that. Now I want to do the smile. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do that little line. Again, I'm going through stitches. I'm going to go underneath and I'm just going to follow the line of the stitches out to here. And what I do is I go like this. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and go this way because I'm going to come back. Yeah, I think I'll get one more stitch in there. And then I'm going to go around. That way the smile is all the way to the edge, okay? I was wondering if I had enough room to get an, a, another stitch in there, but I did. And I'm just going to work my way back up. And if you want your smile just a little bit thicker, you can go back down. There we go. And just thicken it up. There, that looks a lot better. And I like that it's a little bit of a waviness there. There we go. 
go and then I'll just go back over that little line that I made so it's nice and thick and now it's not going to come off it's going to be popping out you'll be able to see it and then we can just weave these back ends going around those black uh, stitches because we don't want any of it to show through and make another little bump or something that doesn't go along with the face that we're trying to make okay now if you were making the seeds let me grab that other one I'll go ahead and clip these off if you were making the seeds you're going to do a similar fashion you're going to go in you're going to make your stitches i only did them one yarn thick if you want them thicker you can go back over them and then you just weave it in in the back and it looks super cute same thing with this one i did the eyes first and I wanted them to be a little bit cockeyed. I don't know if that's the right term. A little bit silly would be a better term for it. And then I just made a plain smile. I didn't add the little cheek lines on this one. And so you can see, you can use your imagination and come up with lots of different styles for your watermelon or your watermelon face. All right, we're gonna make this fun little curl here that I added to this one so that it looks like the watermelon vine. And it's really simple. You just take your green yarn Make your slip knot and chain eight chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then in the second chain from the hook, stitch three single crochets. One, two, three. Now in the next chain, we're going to stitch three single crochets. One, two, three and we'll continue this in each chain stitching three single crochets and you'll notice it already is starting to curl and this will make a nice cute little vine add a little extra pizzazz <laughs> to our watermelon whether we're using it as an applique a bookmark a tag whatever we want to use it for because you can add it to anything that you want to anything you want to have a little extra summer pop there we go so now I have my little curl I'm going to cut my yarn and tie that off all right so this is how the little curl looks now if you're not adding a clip so that you can hang it onto something then you can go ahead and attach your curl Anywhere you want, you can add it up there. If you're making this kind, you could always just add it to the side, whatever you want to do with that curl. You can see on this one, I added it at the top by the hook, and that's what we're going to show you how to do. But before we put the curl on, we wanna add the hook. All right, so I've threaded on some green yarn, and I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and make a little loop. And that's gonna keep my yarn in place and I'll be able to use this little tail to add a little knot but don't tell anybody because this is crochet you're not supposed to add knots all right so you're gonna put your hook like this and we're gonna go around and just stitch over that loop whatever kind of hook you're using this is the way that I added on There we go. And then we'll just work back down, making sure it's nice and secure. You also wanna make sure you can move it up. Don't make it so tight you can't flip this up, okay? Because that's what we're going to do. And we're just putting it through. All right, so now it's gonna stay up like that. So we're gonna to go to the back. Don't tell anyone I'm doing this, but I'm tying a knot. <laughs> and you know I like to tie three, so there's two and three. And I'm gonna tie another one just for good measure because I do not want that coming off nice and snug. All right, so now our little hook is on our watermelon. All right, to attach your curl, you have these two strands of yarn Thread one on, go right underneath 
where you added your hook or if you didn't add your hook just go right up to the top edge all right and pull that one through then we'll take the other one thread that on our needle and go on the other side right up in there there we go I want that to be nice and snug up close there we go I like the way that one looks <laughs> it almost looks like it has a hairdo <laughs> all right so now we're just gonna <clears throat> tie that on again so that stays put all righty and you can weave those in if you prefer but there is our watermelon curl on our watermelon i absolutely love this one i'll probably keep it for myself <laughs> didn't that turn out just adorable i just love it here's the red one that i did the other day with the curl and then of course these two lots of options on how to make your watermelon appliques keychain bag tag and you can put these on anything a bag a hat a tablecloth a placemat a coffee mug anything you want to add just a little bit of summer fun to so go and make a bunch <laughs> we'll see you next friday for friday fun day with sarah <laughs> bye bye now <laughs>